He says there's not only a dwelling place for each of us, but Matthew Henry says it's a lasting dwelling place. That once you get it, you're never going to have to leave it. <laughs> you're going to stay there forever and ever and ever. You ain't got to worry about no bank come and take it. You ain't got to worry about signing on new lease after three years, amen. It's yours. Peter says it's reserved in heaven for you right now. And once you get there and walk across the threshold, you ain't going to never have to worry about ever have to leaving it a day in your life. Somebody should shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Saints, um, before we begin, it is um, the Feast of Weeks, amen, today. Come on, give God some praise, amen. Hallelujah. And we celebrated Passover and we making our way to begin to celebrate the feast days. Amen. And this one kind of snuck up on us. Not really, but it did because we had a lot going on with the Dallas conference and planting the church. Amen. But but the feast of weeks. Amen. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Amen. As we kind of talk and then we'll turn to our scripture. Amen. And kind of get going. But the, the feast of weeks is also known as Pentecost. Somebody say Pentecost. All right, and also it's known as Shavat. Somebody say Shavat. Shavat. All right, all right. Somebody say, I know a girl named Shavat. All right, <laughs> all right. And so, so that's the feast of, of weeks of of of, um, of Pentecost. And so, uh, Shavat or uh, uh, weeks is a celebration, amen, that marks when God gave the law or the Torah to Moses, amen. And so once again, it's, it's one of our holy days that we celebrate, amen, our history, all right? And so it's a celebration of when Yah gave the Torah, the law, to Moses. Um, it is called weeks because it celebrated exactly seven weeks after Passover. So as soon as Passover gets over, they begin to count seven weeks, or we would say 49 days, amen, from Passover, amen, and that's why it's called weeks. Now, it's called Pentecost because Pentecost means 50, yeah. all right? And so they count those 49 days, and on the 50th day, that's weeks, that's Pentecost, amen, that's Shavat, all right? And, um, and all these different names is just the different languages. Shavat is the Hebrew, amen. Uh, 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 Pentecost is more like the Greek, and uh, uh, weeks is, is kind of like the English, amen? And so um, that's what it's all about. Um, let me see. It's ironic because the same holy day that God gave the law is when the Holy Spirit fell in the New Testament. Isn't that amazing? It's almost like what God was saying, I, I gave you an old covenant, amen, during weeks, during Shabbat. But I'm also going to bless you with the new covenant during Shabbat, during weeks. Isn't that awesome? It's like God was saying, this is what I'm moving from the letter and the law to the spirit and grace. Somebody come and give God some praise up in here. And you remember in Acts 2, that's when the Holy Ghost fell. And I have a, a little, little, little slide to, to kind of look. The giving of the law and the giving of the spirit is, is Shabbat, is Pentecost, all right? Got a little picture to show, because remember, they were in that upper room during Pentecost. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost, amen, that was his, his, his hallelujah, uh, 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 his, his infusion, his invasion into the world. Amen. Uh, we saw uh, Father God in creation. We saw the Son of God in salvation, amen, at the cross. And the Holy Ghost coming on in is Pentecost where the disciples were in the upper room and the Holy Ghost was so potent when he came in that you could see him, all right? You could see him. They looked over one another's head and there was flames of fire over their heads. The Holy Ghost. Jeremiah said, your word in me is like fire. Shut up in my bones, huh? And the Holy Ghost, the, the paraclete, huh? The heavenly dove descended the third person of the Godhead to equip the church to fulfill the mission of Yahshua in these last days. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. And this holiday is one of the pilgrimage holidays. Uh, we have three big holidays, amen, Passover, Shabbat, and Tabernacles, where the people of God are called to come in together and worship together and praise God together.
Now, we didn't make a giant call, amen, this year, but we are going to start, amen, probably next year, amen, because we did Passover. We're going to do Shabbat too, amen, and hopefully we'll do, be able to do tabernacles as well, amen, in our own special way, amen, and, and we're going to celebrate the giving of the law and, huh, the giving of the spirit of the most high God. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Huh? <clears throat> when they used to celebrate it back in the in the Bible days, they would do a, 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 a bread offering and they would wave the loaves of bread. Amen. Because it was to celebrate. Hallelujah. The harvest, the grain harvest. Amen. Um, um, also, they would sacrifice the lambs. Amen. Uh, also a representative of Yahshua. Amen. Let me see what else. Uh, the people used to bring their first fruits. Uh, on that particular day in question, they'd come from all over the world, and they would come and present an offering to the Most High God. Normally, the book of Ruth was read and studied, amen, because the whole story of Ruth takes place during Pentecost, during Shabbat, during weeks, huh? Um, um, it was during the harvest time when Ruth, hallelujah, met Boaz, amen, and so uh, uh, that, that is something that's, that's done as well. The book of Ruth is read. Generosity, once again, is implored by God during this time. Because in that book of Ruth, they left the corners of the field for the poor, which was a part of the law. Amen. And so we're going to put something together uh, using our history and, amen, our Bible. And so next year when we come, hallelujah, around this time, People from all over the country are going to come in once again. Amen. They'll be coming to Lafayette most probably three times a year. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to increase the economy of this little city. People are going to be buying houses out here for the holidays. Amen. The holy days. Amen. And, um, and it's happening already. Amen. Because people that live in California, they're able to buy a little house in Lafayette for, for nothing but change. Amen. And so they buying houses out here, amen. They're going to just let the house sit, and then they come here for the holy days, amen, from all over the world. I don't know about you, but I can see it, amen. I can see it, amen, as we celebrate, hallelujah, Pentecost, the festival of weeks, amen. And I think that's about all, amen. I know that uh, one of the things that the Ashkenazis do, I don't know why they do it, but they eat a lot of cheese during this time, amen, and if y'all want to eat cheese, we could do it, but I, I didn't see cheese in the scriptures, amen? And if we eat a lot of cheese during Shabbat, this service might be a little rough, you know what I'm saying? Ain't going to be flames of fire over our head, <laughs> clouds of fragrance over our head, amen? We want the fire, not the clouds, all right? But if y'all want to eat cheese, we can eat cheese, but that's, that's up to y'all, amen? So, but I just don't see it in the scriptures, amen? And so... That's the Feast of Weeks. Come on, give God some glory, amen. Happy Shabbat to you, amen. Hallelujah. May he bless you, you and your children and your children's children, amen. Hallelujah. First lady, let me see. We got a couple of things before I get going. Um, you had something on your heart? Okay, we'll be doing a men's breakfast as well for Father's Day, y'all, amen. Hallelujah. I'm believing we'll still have discipleship training, but the men will be able to come in, grab them some breakfast, amen, either before class or after, however y'all want to do that, but we still have discipleship training uh, during that time. All right, let me check on another announcement. What you got, Ben? It was something else we said. Oh. All right. So y'all, um, take those announcements for joining Creative Arts seriously, y'all, because Creative Arts is about to go up another notch. All right, get involved, get plugged in, amen. This thing is going through the roof, man. So you want to be a part of something great, amen. They're not only going to come to celebrate these feasts with us, but they're going to come to learn ministry, amen. Minister Ann prophetically calls this place the training center, amen, because this is where they're going to come to get trained for ministry. Anybody hear me up in here? And I can see our creative arts teaching our different locations, amen this art, amen, of worship and the dance, amen? And so you want to be a part of that. Uh, also, um, I know we did Esther, but listen closely. I'm not supposed to be telling y'all, but I'm going to tell y'all. Another production is coming. 
Another production is coming. So get close to Creative Arts. Get a part of that, amen, because another production is coming. Another play is coming, all right? And from what I hear, I'm not supposed to tell y'all, all right? So I'm going to whisper to y'all, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't tell nobody. But from what I hear, they may be doing Exodus as the next play. Don't tell nobody. Anybody hear me? Up here? We're going to be looking for some Pharaohs, some, some Moseses. We're going to need some stage hands so we can do this splitting of the sea thing. We got, listen, we got to get this. I want to see the bread from heaven. That's what I want to see. Whatever, whatever y'all do in the place, y'all going to pick it up before we leave. That's what we're going to do. Don't be leaving no bread out here overnight. We on the north side. You better not. <laughs> all right, all right. And so listen, man, we, we in some exciting times. Can y'all feel the energy? We in some exciting times. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, listen, let's go to our Bible. And before I tell you the scripture, listen, I know y'all, y'all want to go back to Revelations and talk about the four horsemen again. All right. We're not going to do that this morning, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. All right. We got people from out of town. John came out of town. John, I'm sorry, man. You know, John said, I came for that pale horse. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Most High led me to talk about something else this morning, but if, if, if he's willing, amen, I'll do it next week. I'm, I'm pretty much ready for it. It takes a lot to get into that prophetic because you gotta mel you got to merge and, 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 and meld together, amen, uh, not only the biblical, but the historical, amen, and the, and the status quo, the current, amen. And so normally he allows me to cook it for a little while before I bring it so that we can be as most accurate as possible. Come on, somebody give God some praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I promise you, amen, uh, uh, you, 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 you're going to be happy with this. Let's go back to John 14. Amen. Hallelujah. And we'll talk. Amen. And we, we might dabble in revelations a little bit, give you a little taste of revelations, since y'all like that revelation. And, and I don't know why we put an S on revelations, but it actually is revelation. All right. Pray for me as I pray for you. Amen. <laughs> It's just the old church. Uh, we still call it Ursher. And uh, you know what I'm saying? So pray for me as I pray for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to First Lady, anything else? All right. All right. Should I tell them about discipleship training? Or are you good? All right. Let's go. All right. John 14, 1. We're going to read probably till about verse 3 or 4. And we'll get going. The Bible says... Let not your, your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know and the way you know, all right? My goodness. Brent, how much more that you got? This is good and good. Let me just keep reading. Thomas said unto him, Lord, huh? we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Woo, my God. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Put some respect on my name, Jesus said. Woo! <laughs> Most high, we thank you for your word. Now bless us, O King, as we delve into, hallelujah, so many mysterious things. Give us wisdom and eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to feel after what the Spirit wants to say to the church this morning. Bless us, God, as we pierce the veil and enter in to the heavenlies. Yahshua will be our tour guide. Point to us the things that are, the things that were, and the things that will be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Saints of God, in this chapter of John, we've been talking about Troubled hearts, hallelujah, in troubled times. And if you remember, hallelujah, 
we had a few points. We talked about trouble. And we asked ourselves, why would the disciples be troubled during this time? And we saw that Jesus had just told them that somebody was going to betray him. And he told them that Peter was going to deny him and that he was about to leave. So they were a bit troubled. But also as a people, persecution was about to begin. Amen. Everything from being ostracized to being martyred. Amen. And not only that, but that the fall of Jerusalem was right around the corner. Rome and Titus were about to march in and lay our city level and our temple level where there would be not one stone placed upon another after Rome was finished. Amen. With our rebellious and stiff-necked people. We saw that there was going to be a scattering of the Hebrews, a diaspora, amen, all across the earth, the four corners of the earth. And so problems, tough times, hard times were coming. And individually, we know that this applies to our lives because we go through trouble. We go through problems. The Bible told us in John 16, 33, that in this world, you shall have tribulation. You will have trouble. In John, in, in Job 14, 1, uh, Job says, man was born a woman. It's, it's few days and, and full of trouble. In Job 5, 7, amen, hallelujah, man is born unto trouble, the Bible says, as sparks fly upwards. Yes, hard times and storms will come. Defeats, failures, setbacks, rejections of all kinds. And we got to know how to live through these things. We can live protected, hallelujah, where we keep moving, or we could be like the whales in the Pacific Ocean that pick up barnacles on their journey, barnacles that slow them down, barnacles that sap energy from them, huh? Hallelujah. So we talked about those problems, those troubles, hallelujah, weighing us down. The second point we looked at was that phrase, let not, let not your hearts be troubled. And we saw that trouble happens to everybody, but it's our choice if we let those troubles get to us. Huh? It's up to us. It's not that we don't have trouble, that some people's lives are, are free of trouble. No, no, no. We all have them. Different kinds at different points, some early, some later, some a little bit easier, some a little bit harder. But in this world, we'll all have it. But it's up to us on how the trouble is going to impact our lives, all right? Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Don't let it. Huh? Don't let it. Don't let it get to your soul. Don't let it get to your inner being. Don't let it rob you of who you are. And we got a lot of people not living their fullest lives and not even being who God created them to be. They're happy, jovial, like Annalise said, that word she made up, that jokative self, Amen. Hallelujah. She said, Daddy, that's a word, baby. We looked it up. Yes, it was a word. All right. Hallelujah. But something has happened where these troubles have robbed you of you. All right. And so we had to figure out a way. How could we go through trouble and let not the troubles trouble us? And so we looked at it and Yahshua gave us the answer. It was all about belief. It was all about faith. We broke down faith as three things, to know something, agree with something, and to trust in something. We said that faith was powerful, amen, because faith stops the barnacles. Faith takes the barnacles off of us, huh? We said that faith was a shield, and I showed you a picture of a man coming through that with, with darts at him and problems coming at him, but our faith protects us from all the fiery darts of the enemy, of life, of our flesh, everything the world can throw at of us, throw at us, our faith can overcome it. Huh? And that's why when he talks about that arm of God, he says, above all, who take upon you the shield of faith. Above all, he says. And there's all kind of armors. There's the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, there's the, there's the feet of the preparation of God, the belt of truth. He says, above all, take it unto you the shield of faith. Because you can't be on this battlefield of life, going through this war of life, and not have a shield with you. Huh? Huh? Come on, somebody. Come on. Huh? That shield of faith. That's why Jesus said, listen, yeah, Peter, Satan's going to come and try to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And it was three things, amen, that, that we should believe in. Huh? It wasn't faith in our team, 
faith in our wife or our husband, huh? That's going to get us through these tough times. No. Nah. We said that number one is believe in God. Ye believe in God, Yahshua says. Faith in God is going to get you through those tough times. What about God? Well, his promises, uh, his existence, his promises, his power, his plans. If you believe in those things, you're going to get through. Your heart is going to be guarded. Huh? Because you know that God is. You know he's got some promises for you. You know he's powerful enough to execute those promises. And you know he got a plan for your life. Huh? Huh? You ain't, you ain't trying to hurt yourself. You ain't trying to hurt nobody else. You ain't running up in no school. You ain't trying to do anything destructive because you know tomorrow's going to be a brighter day because God has plans for your life. You see, a plan is an awesome thing. Huh? Because you know, listen, trouble may happen. Huh? But it's going to work together for your good. When we see tragedy, y'all, it's people that don't know that God has a plan for them. That's why they ain't hurting other people. That's why they ain't hurting themselves. They don't know about his plan. So when we believe in God, huh? It changes our makeup, it changes our approach to life, and it guards our heart from trouble. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Huh? And Jesus says, believe also in me. All right? And that's saving faith. Saving faith. And when you believe in Yahshua and you be saved, there's no trouble that can shake you or break you because your soul had found a resting place. Huh? You found a resting place. Huh? You built on a solid foundation, the rock of Yahshua. You're not built on sand. You ain't trusting and believing in other things. You built on the rock. So when the storms come, which it come to all houses, when the storms come, when the rain beat upon that, when the waves crash against the structure of your life, when it's all over and the sun shines again and the birds are flying, your house is still standing because it's built upon the rock. Come on, give y'all some praise up in this place. And as believers, we have this, ooh, this thing because we're going to see many houses shattered around us. And we can do our best to point them the way, y'all. It ain't nothing special about us. We just built on the rock, you know. And so that's what kind of helps us not let trouble trouble us and get to our heart and get to our soul. Our belief in God, our belief in Yahshua. But there's another belief that I didn't finish. Amen. Coming out of chapter 14 is going to be specifically focusing on verse 2. Let me give you another weapon for your arsenal. Hallelujah. Some more ammunition as you guard your heart as troubles come. It's not only belief in God. It's not only belief in Yahshua. But I want to tell you, believe huh, that we have a prepared place. Believe that we have a prepared place. And this is going to help you. This is another tool in your arsenal to help you when things go awry in your life. Huh? I believe in God. He's going to get you through. I believe in Yahshua. going to get you through. But there is another place for me. There's another place for me. And that's what Yahshua says. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. We have a prepared place and so the next thing that's going to help us in times of trouble is to believe that we have a prepared place. To know that this current world is not our home. To know that we are in it, but not of it. To know that we seek a city whoo, whose builder and maker is God. And though our mind might not seek it all the time and our bodies might not seek it all the time, your soul knows that there's another home for you. And that this world is not our home. Huh? We don't belong here only but to minister to Yahshua, uh, for Yahshua. Amen? But we have another home, y'all. This place uh, 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 is, is what some would call heaven. Huh? Uh, uh, and this heaven is going to make up for all the trouble that we go through on earth. 
Ooh, y'all ain't ever heard me. Y'all ain't ever heard me. God is going to make sure that heaven makes up for all your problems on earth. There's some that go through a lot. We got heavy crosses to carry. But I guarantee you that God is not unjust. Anybody hear me up in here? Huh? The ones that have it the roughest are most probably going to be the ones that's most blessed on the other side. Huh? Because he's going to say you carried the cross. Amen for me. You went through this for me. You had all of these bondages that you didn't choose, but mama chose that and daddy chose that and grandma chose that. And now that's on you, but you carried it. You never forgot my name. Amen. You went through your ups and your downs, but you was in my house. You was lifting up my name. Amen. There's a crown laid up for you. Huh? In your true home. All right. And that is, is heaven. Yeah. Jesus said, believe in God, believe in me. He said, but believe that there's a, a place for the people of God. And sometimes we call that place heaven, but you got to understand the accurate theology of it. Actually, in the end times, this place is going to be a mixture of heaven and earth. All right? We call it heaven, and you can call it that. But it's going to be a mixture of heaven and earth. Pastor, what you're talking about, really, it's a new heaven and a new earth. Huh? And both of those places are going to be married together. You see, we pray that, Lord, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, let me tell you, you can't just pray it and not know what you're praying. <laughs> because his kingdom is coming and his will is going to be done on earth as what? As it is in heaven. Because heaven and earth is going to marry, and that's what our Bible teaches us. If you would be so kind to direct your attention to Revelations chapter, oh, look at that, I go Revelations, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, amen, we can talk a little bit more about it. Huh? Uh, John the Revelator says this in verse 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth will pass away. Ooh, I thank God for the earth passing away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city. Somebody say the holy city. The new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. I told you that heaven and earth is going to be married. <laughs> You see, there's two Jerusalems. <laughs> there's an earthly Jerusalem, but there's also a heavenly Jerusalem. Come on, somebody. There's a sinful Jerusalem, but there's also a holy Jerusalem. Come on, somebody. Woo! He says, I saw the holy, hallelujah, city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Huh? This is going to be the father's uh, wedding gift to Jesus. Anybody hear me up in here? Huh? And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Somebody got to get excited about that. Huh? This new city, we're going to see God walking around that city. Huh? We're going to be chilling, talking. We're going to be like, oh, he coming, he coming. He... Woo! Hallelujah. There he go. Huh? Huh? Hallelujah. My God, my God. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do, y'all. I'm talking to the first lady out there, hallelujah, and Jesus passed by. Woo! Baby, you thought they fainted from Michael Jackson? I'm going to faint. I'm going to faint. <laughs> They're going to tell me, Pastor, you've been in a thousand years. I'm going to say, he just took my breath away, y'all. <laughs> he do it every time. Anybody hear me up in here? I can only imagine like the songwriter said. Because you don't know what he done for me. You don't know where he pulled me out of. You don't know where I was when he found me. Don't come around here and judge me. Woo! My God, my God, my God. Woo! And to have me in heaven? Woo! My God, I'm about to pass out now. 
Look what he says. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God, verse 4 says, shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Anybody ever had some tears on this side? <laughs> Any, anybody ever cried on this side before? <laughs> God going to say, what you crying for? <laughs> and he going to say, don't worry about that. That's all old news, huh? Behold, I make all things new. You ain't got to cry no more. Wipe your tear. Wipe your tear. You ain't got to cry no more. Whatever you done cried for. I don't know what you done cried for. You done cried for them children. You done cried about that husband. You done cried about that wife. <laughs> you done cried because you can't find a good reasonable soul mate. You done cried for loneliness. You ain't going to be alone no more in glory. Amen. Anybody hear me up in here? You don't cry because of struggle and lack and not having. Listen, you ain't going to be in lack no more in glory. Anybody hear me up in here? You don't cry because of the assaults of the devil upon your life and your family. Let me tell you, ain't going to be no more Satan assaulting because Satan is going to be in the place prepared for him. Hey, God. Yeah, there's a place prepared for us, but there's a place prepared for him too. Yeah, be no more weeping, no more crying. He's going to wipe away our, our tears, all the tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Because that's one of the things that we cry the most about. When our loved ones are uprooted out of our lives. Because we was built for eternity. Our souls want to live forever. But we are stranded here in this prison of an earth. This dome of earth where sin reigns and the sting of sin being death reigns in this place. And so we walk a portion of our journey with people knowing that we got to let them go. But our souls want to walk with them forever. Huh? Because he had set eternity in our hearts. Now they uprooted from us on this side. And we got to walk these years left without them. But oh, mama, let me tell you. Oh, Chantel, first lady, let me tell you. A day is going to come where we're going to be with our loved ones again. Amen. And there will be no more death, no more uprooting, no more leaving, no more planning and, and, and wills and, 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 and testaments, no more life insurance policies. No more wondering if they're all right. No, they're all right. They in glory. They in the new Jerusalem. There's going to be no more tears and no more death. Amen. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Oh, that needed I got right there. Yeah. I could point at all of them, but we ain't going to make it that kind of service. Anybody hear me up in here? Come on, Brother Bruce. Oh, you know what I'm talking about here. Come on. Listen here. I'm getting to that way. I get out of bed and I got to, oh. Sometimes I make, I made a noise the other day and Grace came and she said, you all right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah baby, that's just my back, you know what I mean? Messing with Tyrone on that basketball court, that's just my back. You know what I'm saying? Listen, listen, no more pain. How many people look for a day where there's no more pain in your body? Oh my God, no more pain, huh? I love that, y'all. You see, because no more pain means no more sickness. Ooh, no more disease. Hey, God. Huh? No more medication. No more shots. No more hospitals. No more, hey, God, hospital visits. Listen, there won't be a hospital in heaven. Anybody hear me up in here? Ain't going to be no doctors in heaven. I love the doctors. How they're a necessary thing. But listen, heaven is going to be a different place. Huh? I don't know how I'm going to move around. Y'all think I'm fast now? Wait till I get to glory. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to race with Kenneth and all them young boys up there. Huh? I'm going show y'all what's really going on. Huh? You two eyes, bring it on. Listen, I'll meet you in glory, baby. We're going to do that. Hallelujah. L -l -l listen, listen, where we at? Where we at? I got excited. Be any, no more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write, 
for these words are true and faithful. Come on, give him some praise up in here. That's that amen in the heavenlies. That's that let it be so in the heavenlies. That means God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Come on, somebody, give him a hallelujah up in here. Woo! Woo! I know you can't see it now, but we're going to see each other there. And you're going to say, Pastor, remember that, that sermon in June, huh? We saw it in the spirit, but now we're here, Pastor. Huh? Now move out the way, Pastor. I won't see Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right. So, hallelujah. Let's look at it. Let's break it down a little bit. Go back to, to John 14. Hallelujah. So we're we, we, we going to have a, a new heaven and a new earth. We call it heaven, but it's going to be a mixture of both heaven and earth because heaven is going to come down. Amen. In the end. Amen. And touch earth, marry with earth. And that is the place where we're going to live in the kingdom of our God. And so Jesus begins to describe that. And, and, and as you, amen, allow that thought that we have another home, a better place, amen, to just marinate in your spirit. You are going to live a life not so much troubled by the things on this earth. All right. And Jesus says, he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Watch this. He wants to direct our attention there. In my father's house are many mansions. Now, he describes that place that we talked about coming down from heaven as my father's house. My God. Isn't that something? Huh? This place, huh? We go into is the father's house. It's God's house. Huh? What God you talking about? The creator? Huh? The one with all power? The one with all might? The king of kings? And the lord of lords? The eternal one? The one who was, is, and is to come? The one who never dies? Woo! The one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills? The one they say the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof? Huh? Everything in the heavens, everything in the seas, everything in between, on the earth, under the earth, everything that bows to him, the sovereign one. Anybody hear me up in here? The one who reigns supreme, that the sun don't shine without getting permission. The moon don't reflect, amen, without getting approval. Huh? Before the animals have children, he got to go ahead and write down, let it be so. Huh? The grass can't even come up every morning until he give the okay. The ants can't build a mound. The bees can't make honey. Huh? The birds can't sing without him. He is the most high God. That God has a house. Jesus says, my father's house. The word house right here in the Greek means a residence. Woo! You ever wanted to know where somebody live? <laughs> you meet somebody, see somebody on YouTube, or, or, or you check them out, huh? And they doing a lot of things, and you wonder. You say, I wonder how their house look. Huh? God about to tell us how his house looks. He said, my father's house. This is God's home. His dwelling place, his abode. This is not only a place for him, but a place for his family. <laughs> it's his house. My father's house. It's a, it's a place where he keeps his possessions, his wealth, his goods. It's a place where his servants work, his employees, where all of them are. My father's house. And I know oftentimes we call this place God's house. And it is a small extension of God's house. It is an embassy of God's house on earth. But let me tell you something. There is a real house of God that we will see shortly. Come on, give God some praise up in this place. Anybody hear me up in here? Huh? Now remember, y'all, it's a house of the one. Huh? The preeminent one, the supreme one, the God of all creation. And so this house is just not going to be an ordinary house. 
this house, as we read in Revelations, is actually, Revelation, is actually a city. His house is a city. That's why they say that, hallelujah, no building on this side can contain him. He don't dwell in houses mm, made by the hands of men. The earth can't contain his glory. Huh? Heaven can't contain his glory. Huh? Hallelujah. He's so immense that his glory spills over <laughs> out of heaven. Anybody hit me up in here? All right. And so if we look at Revelation 21, Revelation 21, verse 3, amen, it tells us in the NLT, hallelujah, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look. In the King James, it says God's tabernacle. In the NLT, uh, uh, de de deciphering that, look, God's home is now among his people. That city, that New Jerusalem, that Zion is the house, the home, the dwelling place of Almighty God. Somebody give God a shout up in this place. He got a whole city that's called home. Huh? Home. And it's among, it'll be among his people. He's going to live with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with him. Sound booth, I'm going to mix some things up. Let's go directly to B. Huh? We've talked about my father's house. Let's look at this phrase, many mansions. Many mansions. All right. Now from that point, sound booth, back it up. And we're going to go to Revelations 21.9. All right. I just just on by the spirit, mixing some things up a little bit as the spirit would give give me order and, and unction. Amen. To properly deliver this message that you might understand it completely. All right. Many mansions. Somebody say, I've got a mansion, got a mansion. in heaven. Amen. Come on, give him some praise up in here. You caught it, prophetess. You caught it. And there's some debate about this term mansion. All right. And I don't buy with the new church. See, they don't they scared to call it a mansion. No, 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 no. I got a mansion in heaven and I'm going to show you why it's a mansion. All right. Because after I show you the city, <laughs> you're going to say anything that's in this city is a mansion. Anybody hear me up in here? Because we call mansion some other things. huh? Some people walk in your house and say, oh, this is a mansion, baby. Ain't going to compare to what he got for us in the city of God. Anybody hear me up in here? All right. So as we look at 21.9, y'all not sleeping, huh? Come on, let's pierce the veil. Let's go to heaven for a second. Huh? Because as you focus on heaven, huh? You ain't going to worry about no problems here on earth. No? Huh? And the book of Revelation says, and there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vows full of the seven last plagues and talk with me saying come here and I will show thee the bride the lamb's wife in verse 10 and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God he says in verse 11 when he looked at it this city had the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone, most precious. The whole city looked like a jewel, he's saying. Even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And we would understand jasper is a type of stone, but I guess one of the closest stones that, that you could call jasper would be like a diamond. All right, and I'm going to show you some pictures of the stones here, amen, later on. Oh, well, I guess I'll show it now, amen. <laughs> show me the next slide of the stones, amen. We can get a jasper when it's clear. You see jasper up there? When it's clean, polished, and clear, it looks like a diamond. And John the Revelator, standing on a mountain, watching this city descend, saying to look at it was to look at a giant diamond coming from the sky. All right? Uh, uh, in verse 12, it says, and it had a wall, great and high, and 12 gates. Huh? Can I tell you that God stays in a gated community? All right. Some of y'all trying to play humble. I don't want to stay in no gated community. What's 
wrong with staying in the gated community? If, if the gated community got the house that you like and, and God done provided, go ahead and get your gated community. Why? God stays in a gated community. And it ain't just one gate. How many? Huh. Huh. And you mad at somebody with one gate. Look at your neighbor and say, live where you want. Look at your other neighbor and say, enjoy all the blessings God got for you. Huh? Look behind you and say, get you a gated community. That's what I'm saying. Woo! My God, my God, my God. Live in one, build one, develop one. All right. So they had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. All right. Did y'all know that God had security? Some of y'all mad at the security team. But in heaven, God has security. Because at every gate, there's an angel there. Twelve angels at every gate. I don't know if y'all know about angels, but one angel in the Bible killed 185,000 men. So one of them could get the job done. Remind us of our security. Anybody hear me up in here? Twelve of them angels. So don't get mad at the church when they got security. Don't get mad at people when they stay in gated communities. Because God had gate. God's got gates. And God's got security. He's got angels. All right? And don't get mad at that. Because where you live, going to have gates and security. Ooh. Ooh. By faith, you need to begin to tell people, I stay in a gated community. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You got a house and gated community. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. All right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Y'all good? I love you, cook. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So here we go. Speaking of them, huh? Twelve angels at the gates, huh? <laughs> Speaking of them, huh? <laughs> give God some glory for our. All right. Hallelujah. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. What an awesome thing. That God would put our tribes, the names of our tribes, huh, written, hallelujah, hallelujah. On, the, on the gates of heaven. Huh? This is amazing, y'all. Huh? Our people. 13. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. He's got three gates on every direction of this home. We're describing God's house. Y'all still with me? He says, in my father's house, or what? Or many mansions. As you think about this and contemplate this, you ain't going to worry about no problems that's in your life. Huh? Because you got a better home that's coming. Look what he says in 14. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Somebody say 12 foundations. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. What a great honor. That in the city of God, the foundations going to have on it the name of the apostles. Peter and Matthew and John and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Nathaniel. All the 12. What an honor. Huh? I'd cry like that too if my name was on that. My God. On the foundations, huh? And 15, and the angel that talked with me, John said, had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. He's about to measure the city for us. Because let me tell you something. You see, you, you, see, you, see, you see, a house is impressive, yeah, but you won't know the square feet. You got you to have some square foot up in here. Well, come around here with an impressive house in 200 square feet. No, that ain't no house. That's a room. You understand what I'm saying? He said, my father's what? House. He's about to measure this thing. No? And verse 16, and the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. What does that mean, Pastor? The city is equal on all sides. The length is as long as the width, the breadth. Huh? The city is a perfect square. He's about to describe God's house. Are y'all with me up in here? God's house is a square. It's as wide as it is long. All right? Not only that, Hallelujah. And he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs. All right. Now, I used to go to the racetrack all the time with my dad. All right. And we used to read the racetrack book. 
And he would tell me how long they're running. I'd, I'd be like, such and such furlongs, daddy. All right. But, but when we look at 12,000 furlongs, that's roughly about 1,400 miles. The city, huh? The city, huh? On one side is 1,400 miles. 12, hallelujah. Let me see. Wait, let me see. Let me see. Hallelujah. 144 cubits. Where we at, y'all? Verse 16. Yeah, that's it. 12,000 furlongs, huh? On one side. So on one side is 1,400 miles. But guess what? The length is, 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 is equal to the breadth. So on the other side, 1,400 miles. The other side, 1,400 miles. Huh? We talking about God's house. And the length is 1,400 miles. And the width is 1,400 miles. That's a big, big house. You see why he say in my father's house are many what? Don't you be thinking about your house. That's why in the new church they call it apartments and dwellings. It's mansions in this house. You understand what I'm saying? All right. All right. Watch this. And he measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man and an angel. 18. And the building of the wall of it was jasper. All right. He's about to go into all, hallelujah, all the, the, the stones. All right. It was jasper, pure like gold. The city was like gold, clear as glass. 19, come on, Pastor, move quickly. The foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. You know, we build out of wood and, and brick. God's house is built with jewelry. Yeah. We got Christians on this side don't want nothing nice. Look how God living. They met at my GMC that's out there. God's house is built with jewels, rubies, emeralds, diamonds, onyx, and all, topaz. That's why John said when he looked at it, it looked like a diamond coming down. Because his house is a giant jewel. Huh? And where you don't have precious stones, it's built with gold. Gold so pure, they say it's like glass. Transparent gold, the theologians say. I never saw gold you could see through. But that's how real it is. Look at him. He said, first foundation of jasper, second foundation of sapphire, third foundation of chalcedony. That's a word that I just pray to God that he was with my tongue before I said it. <laughs> the fourth, an emerald. The fifth, a sardonyx. The six sardis, the seven a chrysolite, the eight a barrel, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus, the eleven a jessing, the twelfth an amethyst. You see what I'm saying? He got stuff we ain't never heard of up in there. <laughs> they making up jewels in heaven. We call this a chrysoprasus. All right now, I got to pitch it one more time for the jewels so you can see them. Hey man, look at that. God's building his house of this stuff. See that amethyst sister? <laughs> See that purple, that pretty purple? Look at that sapphire, that pretty blue. That's what he's building his house out of, that emerald. Huh? Stuff that they're killing and fighting for down here. God's going to have that as building material for his house. What you worry about money for? Where you going, the streets made of gold. <laughs> Woo! My God, my God, my God. What verse we was in, y'all? Come on. 21. And, and, the, and the 12 gates were 12 pearls. That's why they say in heaven there's what? The pearly gates. And let me tell you, I don't know about you, but a pearl is an expensive thing. A pearl is a precious thing. It takes years for them little, what that, clams, oysters to make that pearl. You see what I'm saying? Huh? And God said, hey, God, he going to make whole gates, 12 gates of solid pearl. Huh? Some of y'all just going to stand by the gate, have your hand on the gate. And thank God y'all been delivered because some of y'all would have tried to take a piece off the gate. Woo! But heaven is going to be a place that's holy. The old you ain't going to be. Y'all just going to rub the gate. Some of y'all going to say, Jesus, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'd rather be a doorkeeper at the house of the Lord. <laughs> hey! Than to dwell in the tents. I know why you won't stand by that door. 
Let me catch you with a gate around your neck. Let me catch you. <laughs> I'm going to say, put that back. You make our church look bad up, up here. Then he's going to say, who's your pastor, baby? Who was your pastor? You might say, gates of pearl. Every several gate was a one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Ooh, God. I could see them all running and sliding down the street. <laughs> well, stay still, boy. Hold on, let me go with you. <laughs> Jesus gonna come in there. What y'all doing? Well, you see, Jesus, we were shining it. There was a spot right here I couldn't get with my hands, so... My tunic was the only thing I, okay, okay, come on, come on, y'all cutting up too much. He said, the street's going to be as gold, huh? And I saw no temple there, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of sun, need the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof, huh? His face going to shine in the city. Mm. Ooh, won't be no need for no light. And I don't know if you ever shine the light on a diamond, huh? As that diamond reflects. Well, the glory gonna be in the city, bouncing off the stones, the emeralds, the sardonyx, the chrysoprasses, and all, all this other stuff. It, John said it looked like a piece of jewel coming out down with the glory of God upon it. I'm talking about our home. I'm talking about the kingdom that's coming. You see, 23, just a couple more. And the city had no need of some. We read that already. 24, and the nations of them which are saved, because that's going to be in it, shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And one of the things that I didn't say that I wanted to say is that the city is not only 1,400 miles long and 1,400 miles wide. But there is a height of the city. And the length and the width are all equal to the height. The city is not only a square, but the city is a cube. It's three-dimensional. It's as high as it is long. It's as high as it is wide. You see, that's the city of God, that's God's house. Now, I got some rough depictions of it, but you gonna get there and say, Pastor, it's way better than that. <laughs> but that's how it's gonna look when it's coming down. A city built as wide and long as it is high. It's a cube filled with the glory of God with foundations that stones and as it come down, hallelujah, we're going to say, look what the Lord has done. Jesus says, I have a place <laughs> that's prepared for you. Come on, give him some glory <laughs> in this house. Now, y'all know I got to be petty for a second. Based upon the dimensions of this new heaven and new earth coming down from glory, it tells us that the earth cannot be a globe. It can't be round. <laughs> you can't sit something that big and that flat, that cubic on a round surface. <laughs> it wouldn't even fit right. Let me show you a picture of that. <laughs> the ends would be 15 miles above her. You'd have to be careful. <laughs> Some of y'all wouldn't want to stay on in that neighborhood because y'all fall off. Huh? Huh? Look at it. Does that look right? <laughs> that don't look right. And God does everything perfect and everything right. It can't sit on something round. Now it can sit on something flat. Hey, my God. See, everywhere I look, I just see the truth, Malvo. All right? All right? Now, let's talk about this for a second. All right? Let's just, let's just have fun up in here, all right? <laughs> now, say, they say that thing spinning a 1,000 miles per hour while it's orbiting the sun at 10,000 miles per hour. Now, how that little square 
on the top of the earth, gonna be going around in the orbit. See, I'm not gonna got excited and drop my cushion. Hold on, let me put my afro back on my mic. How would that work? That's not even aerodynamically sound. To put that there would slow down the supposed orbit and the supposed rotation, all right? It's not truth, but as we, as we learn truth, everything else fits together like a puzzle. This thing is not gonna be on a globe, on a ball. Huh? It's gonna be on a plane, which is the earth that the Bible says that we live on. Now let's talk about how high it is. It's between 14, 1500, some people say 13 to 1500 miles high, all right? Airplanes, commercial planes, amen, they fly about six to seven miles above the earth. God's house is 1,400 miles high. Huh? Look at that, y'all. They say the International Space Station is just 200 miles above the earth. God's house is 1,400 miles high. Some satellites, y'all, hallelujah, are not as high as God's house going to be. You say, Pastor, that's hard to imagine. Well, good thing God can do exceedingly above and beyond all that you could ever hope or imagine. You see, if my God can create all these things that we enjoy, he definitely can create a city, huh? That's 1,400 miles wide, long, and high, huh? Hallelujah. Come on, give some God some glory for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So that's why Jesus says, in my father's house are many mansions. In this structure, y'all, there would be so much room for the people of God to live in. Huh? And, and, and the material that is made out of would beg to answer the question. Will we, will, be, will we be living in apartments, huh, condos, the projects? No, 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 no. If they got gold streets and emerald foundations, listen, I don't know where you're from, but where I'm from, looking at this city, and our house is going to be in this city, what God going to give us is going to be a mansion. Anybody hear me up in here? All right. Diamonds as walls and all kind of stuff like that. What was the definition of a mansion, Pastor? A large and impressive stately residence. You see? And that's what my God is going to be giving me and you when we get up there. And Jesus tells us, going back to John 14 and 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And Jesus is saying like that in the street, we would say, I ain't lying. That's what Jesus said, I ain't lying. I'm keeping it real with you. Because he's the only one that had been there. And so he's telling you what he didn't observe. He ain't telling you what he heard. He's telling you, listen, no, there are many managers. And he said, I would never lie to you. Amen. You know? In a little while, we're going to figure out he's the way the truth and the lie. He can't lie. Right. He's never going to lie to you. Amen. He said, if you didn't have a mansion in heaven, he would have told you you didn't have one. Right. You see? And that's what he's saying. Huh? He says, hallelujah, I, I, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, all right? The next point right here is that it's not only my father's house, it's not only a mansion, but it's a place prepared for you, yeah. all right? Huh? I love this, y'all. Yeah. We get an awesome city, we get an awesome mansion, but the mansion we get is specifically tailor-made, prepared for you. All right? You ever walk in a place and say, this is home. All right? Some of us get that feeling when we house shopping. We, we go in a place and we say, oh, this is it. This is it. It's just something about it. Well, when you get to heaven, you're going to get that exponentially and eternally. You're going to walk in a place where Jesus himself going to handpick all the furnishings, all the colors, all the countertops, all the floors. Everything that's in that, Jesus is going to take his knowledge about you, 
about your likes and your dislikes. I would beg to say that Jesus will do you better than you could do you. Anybody hear me up in here? You're going to look in there and say, I never even knew I wanted that. You're going to walk up in there, I never knew they had that. <laughs> you know? But Jesus is going to make a residence for you. Huh? With your name on it. It's a place prepared for you. You know? And I done told you before that the most high done ministered to me, man. And some of the most troublesome time, they'll tell me, listen, I got a place for you. Huh? And I thought I caught a glimpse, amen, of a mountain of a residence for Pastor Omar. Huh? And I'm ready to go there, but I'm not ready to go there. I'm ready, but I'm not ready. Oh, God, I'm not ready. Just let, let me work a little longer. Amen. amen. It's like Paul say, we stuck betwixt two. Yes. Huh? A rock and a hard place. Having wanting to go to be with Jesus, but wanting to stay to do the work of God. Anybody hear me up in here? But this place is going to be awesome. And I can't wait to visit your houses. I'm going to be walking down, hallelujah, 24 carat lane. Amen. <laughs> Anybody hear me up in here? Stop by first lady. I'm going to say, your house is nice, but it ain't better than mine, baby. Because listen. <laughs> but she's going to say, it don't have to be better than yours because it's prepared for me. Hey, God. First lady still going to be sassy in heaven, baby. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Woo! Somebody say, prophesy, Pastor. You're going to stop by Miss Denise's house bar, prayer chamber. You're going to walk in, it's going to be, oh, on the wall. Hey, God! Stop by Brother Carl, baby. He's going to have that orange that like he got on his truck. It's going to be everywhere up in there. Prayer chamber. Huh? Huh? Miss Mary, huh? We're going to stop by her house. The prophetess, huh? All them boys going to be in there. Isaiah, Jeremiah. No room, no room for nothing up in there. Stop by Minister Duck, it's gonna be tears up in there. You gonna... I'm just joking because he said he's gonna wipe away. Oh, oh tear, come on, Minister. What are you gonna put in your heart, huh? I'm telling you, listen, man, prepare specifically for you. That's why Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. As soon as you get saved, Jesus starts contracting your house. Huh? Because he's preparing a place for all those that's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. When you come to that altar, Jesus come out, he say, fellas, we got a new project. Yep. Amen. We got to build a place. Hallelujah. For Leola, for Sam, for Isaac, anybody, for Tory. Amen. And he start contracting. and Putting everything that you would dream of, everything you would want in that. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. Come on, last point. Come on, come on, come on, last point. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And before we get there, listen, I got a couple of notes. Matthew Henry says this. He says, there's not only a dwelling place for each of us, tailor-made specifically for you, but Matthew Henry says it's a lasting dwelling place. Yeah. All right? It's no rent. It's no lease. It's no terms. It's no mortgage. It's no eviction. It's no foreclosure. It's a place that's yours and built for you. That once you get it, you're never going to have to leave it. <laughs> you're going to stay there forever and ever and ever. You ain't got to worry about no bank coming and take it. You ain't got to worry about signing on a new lease after three years. Amen. It's yours. It's yours. Peter says it's reserved in heaven for you right now. And once you get there and walk across the threshold, you ain't going to never have to worry about ever have to leaving it a day in your life. Somebody should shout unto God with a voice of triumph. <laughs> Woo! It's mine. Oh, my. You see what I'm saying here? Hallelujah. Last point. Jesus says, hallelujah, he's coming again to receive you. All right? In verse 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And this is beautiful. This is good news. Jesus is saying, I'm not going to be building a place for you and you not going to enjoy it. Because I'm coming to get you. And the old theologians say he's going to come and get us even either one or two ways. Amen. 
when we close our eyes and cross Jordan on this side, he going to come and get us individually. When the lights go dim, remember we said, Yahshua going to say, Yahweh going to say, I am with thee. Come to get us. I'm coming to get you, to receive you, to walk you, amen, into your new home. I'm going to be your real estate agent, amen. Huh? I'm going to be your title attorney, amen. I'm going to be your mortgage lender, amen. I'm going to walk you into your new place, amen. Huh? Into the joy of your Lord. He said, I'm going to come to receive you. But not only that, amen, if he returns before we get a chance to cross Jordan, he said, I'm coming back to get you. He said, I'm not going to prepare a place for you that you're not going to enjoy. Your name is on the title, amen, of this particular hallelujah residence. He says, if I prepared it, amen, I will come again and receive you unto myself. He says, hallelujah, that where I am, there you may be also. And I have in my notes that this is the best thing about heaven. And there's a lot of good things about heaven, y'all. The way it looks, the luxury, the jewelry, the gold, the people that's going to be there. Our loved ones that we miss so dearly that we're going to be finally able to enjoy them freely with no sickness and no death. I can't wait to see my daddy and let my daddy see me with his own eyes. You see what I'm saying? He went blind, so he was never able to see me become a man. You see? I would love, amen, to watch him walk on his own legs. Amen? I'd love to meet my brother there, Red, with no diabetes, not having to take shots, not having to be on dialysis. Amen? Hallelujah. That's going to be a wonderful thing for me. To see my grandpa, papa, and my grandmother, my mom. I want to see all of them. Hallelujah. All right? And that's what's going to make heaven so wonderful. And not only my family, but the church family that have come and gone. Huh? The people that was in here, seated in those seats, that right there, like Mr. Flugents. Anybody remember? Huh? Hallelujah. And there's so many that done went on and gone. Amen. That was not a part of my blood family, but was a part of my church family. And that got into glory because of this ministry. And I can't wait to see them. They're going to say, Pastor, you was in line up there. This, this is really our home. You see? You see? And not only the ones that's gone before. I can't wait to see you up there. Huh? Huh? Come on, Bernard Felton. We're going to be up there together, baby. Come on, Deacon. Deacon Ness, Tessa, we're going to be up there. Minister Ant, we're going to be up there. Huh? Minister Phil, well... Uh, Golly. Phil, we gonna be up there, Phil. Huh? My Lord, Mrs. Dwight, we gonna be up there, y'all. I can't wait to see y'all. And we gonna be able to enjoy each other the way it's supposed to be. Pure fellowship. Pure love. Walking around heaven all day long. Anybody hear me up here? And my beautiful wife gonna be up there. Huh? I can't wait to see you, baby. I hope they let us kiss in heaven. <laughs> Maybe when Jesus is not looking. We're going to just... I'm just joking. My kids, by faith, hallelujah, in glory. Anybody hear me up in there? All grown. I'm people who you are. I'm Omar. I don't know what you've done with my boy, boy, but you better... See, all of us in our fullness, in our perfect human bodies. Huh? Some of the old saints, they're going to say, Pastor, you ain't saw nothing yet, Pastor. <laughs> you think you done seen me? Now, nah, Pastor, but woo! Y'all heard Mr. Reese? Mr. Reese say, come on. <laughs> you see? But the shadows show up in there. Listen, that's going to be all good about heaven. But the best part about heaven, Jesus says this, that where I am, there you may be also. We're going to see him. Woo! The one who died, bled, and rose from the grave. The one who purchased our sin-sick souls. The one who saved us off the drug, off the club, heal our bodies, fix our marriages, 
hallelujah, walked by, saw us in our blood and told us, you going to live. We going to see him, y'all, the one that we owe everything to. I don't know about you, but I'm going to shout, dance, and then pass out. Come on, give God. I'm going to worship till I pass out. I'll be on the ground like this. <laughs> if y'all see me, duck, just tell just put a, put a, do old church, put a blanket over me. <laughs> and say, he going to be all right, y'all. He going to be all right. He do this every day. He going to be all right. <laughs> give him a couple hours. Give him a couple hours. All right? Hallelujah. We going to see him, y'all. All right, so listen, we got we to gotta cut loose. We got to cut loose. Jesus says, hallelujah, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Worship team, come help me out. We're going we're gonna to pray. Amen. And, and we're going to talk about the gospel for a little while. Most high God, we thank you that troubles come. But we thank you that we can focus on you, your son, and we can also focus on our home that's coming. And we thank you that your promises are yes and amen. We give you praise so much, O King. And we pray, O Daddy, that, hallelujah, when we see it, woo, <laughs> we would be so impressed, God. Hallelujah. But that we would believe it even now before we see it, God. And Father, I just want to pray for those that's in here that don't know if they're going to make it or not. I pray that today be the day of salvation. That you would forgive them and heal them and bless them. and Give them what they need to make it in. That new Jerusalem. So be with us, God. At this altar call. Let your presence abide here, O King. And we promise to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Yahshua, Jesus. Ushers, please open up the gates. I want to take some time to invite you, amen, into heaven's road, into the Lamb's book of life. I want to take this opportunity to invite you, amen, to put your name on Jesus' construction list. That you would hire him to be your contractor, to build your home woo, in the city of God. I guess for today, I'm going to be your real estate attorney. I've shown you the city, the dimensions, how it look. And now I'm offering you a lot. Amen. In this glorious place that we call Zion. And I want to tell you, amen, that it's in your price range. <laughs> because to get a lot is absolutely free. <laughs> All you got to do is believe you got to believe that hallelujah number one that Jesus loves you and that though you are a sinner he died on the cross for all of your sins you got to believe that he was buried in the grave and on the third day he rose and you got to believe that with all of your being no matter what the world says no matter what science says you got to be adamant that your Redeemer lives and that he's coming back again. And if you have that faith, huh, acknowledging that you've fallen short of the glory, but the blood of Jesus alone covers and forgives you of all your sins, if you have that faith, you can sign the closing documents to your lot in heaven this morning and though you're not even there you could do what we call in real estate law you could purchase it this morning sight unseen oh because we walk by faith and not by sight anybody hear me up in here you're not only going to trust him with your soul but you're going to trust him with your mansion 
that it's going to be every single thing that God had promised you. And I want to tell you that our God can't lie. Listen at this altar this morning. Listen, people are going to get saved this morning. If you're not sure of your salvation, amen, in a second you're going to come and pray with pastor and we're going we're gonna to get that right. Amen. We're going to close on your deal in the new Jerusalem. All right? Besides that, if you're a Christian already and you already got your lot, but you've been letting the troubles and the cares of this world weigh you down, and you need God to steady, steady, hallelujah, your ancient soul this morning, this altar, is going to be for you as well. We're going to pray peace upon you. We're going to pray shalom upon you. We're going to pray joy upon you again. You're going to take your mind off the problems of this world and set your mind and your heart on heaven. You're going to seek those things which are above earth. Amen. To live a full life on the earth. So listen, I've talked enough. You know whether you got to be at this altar. So unbeliever and believer, Christian and future Christian, man, woman, and child, receive the call of the gospel. Come. Come and pray with your pastor. Come and pray at this altar. Come and pray and let's focus again, amen, on heaven as our home. Amen. Come and sign your, hallelujah, your contract. Hallelujah, in glory. Come on, we've been about a lot of things up in here. Let's be about God and his way again. Come on, come on, will you come? Come on, will you come? Come on, come steady your anxious soul. Come on, come let your troubles be. Hallelujah, come let them melt away in the presence of God. Come on, all of your grief and all of your sorrow. Come on, he'll give you a taste of wiping your tears even while we're here. Amen. Hallelujah, that's a good one right there. Ooh, that's a good one right there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just want to make it to hell. Ooh, my God. <laughs> Ooh. That's all we want. <laughs> Ooh. Come on, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Just want my name. Where you want it written at? pray with him right now for this little intermission I want whoever can hear my voice imagine yourself at the throne of God and just ask God with your own mouth for forgiveness for healing and for salvation so come on if you can repeat after me just say God my creator I admit I've done wrong in my life. 
but I believe that you still love me and that you died for me for all my sins. I receive your forgiveness. Your blood covers it all. I believe you died that you were buried and on the third day I believe you rose again. Now save me. Forgive me. And write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Begin working on my mansion in heaven. Prepare it just for me. Blow my mind. Put things in it that you know I want. Use me on this side until I meet you in glory. Until I hear you say, well done. Come on, give him glory in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints of God, we just, we got to do the Lord's Supper. Amen. And it's an awesome time to do the Lord's Supper. If you forgot it in your seat, amen, just go back to your seat and, and grab one. If you have it, feel free to stay up here. Amen. Hallelujah. At the altar. We can, we can do this together. Amen. Um, ushers, if you want to come to the altar and pass around at the altar some of our extra ones, ushers, y'all can do that. Amen. But I think it's fitting, amen, this morning, as we talk about heaven, a time when we're going to be with the Most High to celebrate what he's done for us to get us there. Amen. And so the Bible tells us, as you open up and you take the bread, which represents his body. The Bible tells us that the night that Yahshua was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to all of his disciples, his followers, his people. And he said, take this, eat it, all of you. This is my body, which was broken for you to save you, to heal you, to bless you. And he's saying the time to come, never forget it. Do this every once in a while. Do this in remembrance of me. And so Yahshua, we thank you for your body. We thank you for your sacrifice. And we praise you. And we acknowledge that we will never forget what you've done for us. Let us eat together. The Bible tells us in the same fashion he took the cup after supper and he told his disciples he says listen this is my blood of the new covenant without the shedding of blood there could be no remission no forgiveness of sins we are only forgiven because blood was shed for us it couldn't be anything but the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He told his disciples spiritually, he said, he said, this, 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 this grape, this grape juice, this, this wine, it represents my blood. He says, drink it all of you in remembrance of me. And so right now we're gonna drink this fruit of the grape as a remembrance of the blood that was shed on Calvary's hill. Lord Jesus, thank you for your blood. We'll never forget. We drink, we partake because you've been so good to us. Use this symbol of the blood to heal us and to bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints of God, this concludes our service. As you, hallelujah, you go out, hallelujah, pass it, the, the cups down to, to our ushers. 
But before you go, amen, shake somebody's hand. Tell them an encouraging word. Go ahead and, and speak faith. Tell them that you're saved. Tell them you're forgiven. Because when you speak something, it happens in your life. Encourage one another. Shake hands. Just don't run out of here. Huh? Because there's going to be a time where we're going to spend eternity together. You might as well get to know one another now. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with peace. Bless you with shalom. Shalom, Israel. Shalom. Good morning, good morning. Good Thank y'all for tuning in once again to The After Show. Um, we're so excited to have y'all. We're so excited to be able to talk about the word once again. Of course, it was another great word. Pastor Omar awesome. definitely delivered yes. um, once again. And so we want to chat about it um, and just kind of talk about uh, heaven, which is always a good thing to talk yes. about. Yes. That's yes. always exciting to, you know, to look forward to what it is that God has for us in the next life. And um, Pastor Omar had just kind of continued in his sermon with, with trouble. And he had talked about a couple weeks ago about how, you know, in this life we have to face trouble. You know, it just, it comes with the territory as a Christian, as a child of God, you will face trouble. You will have issues in life and, you know, it just, it's a part of it. It's but of it. thank God that trouble don't last always. always. Amen. You no, know, thank, thank God you that we have a home that's not made by the hands of man. And, and that's what a uh, pastor kind of talked about today he talked about the home that we have that's prepared for us on the other side Man. and so we just want to chat about that this morning so we can start with our first guest What's going on? Good, morning. Hey, good morning good morning good morning introduce yourself for us my name is Brittany Arsenal all right, right Miss um, Brittany so what's something that you kind of took away from the word this morning um God uh lately I've been actually going through a lot of trouble so actually what God spoke to me was that trouble don't last always is what I kept hearing yeah so God kind of was like ministering to my situations and what I'm dealing with and letting me know that even though I'm here on earth, mm -hmm. that when I make it to heaven, it's going to be so much better. Come I on. won't have this pain. I won't have this sorrow no more. Yeah. So that's what I kind of took from the word. Right. That's so good. <laughs> very inspiring. Huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's how I look at it, too. Heaven is very um, inspiring. Like, it, it lets you know that, like you say, uh, the things that we're going through even now is like... Yeah. And look, it is, it's only temporary. Right, right, right. And it's actually making us stronger too at the same time. Mm -hmm. But it uh it points our direction when we get when we think about heaven. We like, man, you know what? It motivates us to get through whatever we're going through. Amen, yeah. amen. And it encourages us to say, you know what? Man, I have a place for me, a mansion. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank so, you, yeah, Lord. That's what I got out of it too. Yeah. And it requires some faith. I mean, I've I've been talking to a few people and it seems like just across the board it's a time of of shaking and pressing mm -hmm. for God's people. Like Amen. right now it's just so many people are going through so much. Like I can think of so many people that I've talked to that are just, we're kind of going through it at the yeah, moment, you know, together. and it's, it's just, it's one yeah. of those times Same where, yeah, no we, yeah, I've we got to I've been talking to a lot of people and they've been going through a lot of things yes. too. Mm -hmm. We yes. just get together and we just pray together. But yeah. that's why I don't even complain. Cause I'm like, wait, hold on. My problem is not nothing compared to them. Mm. Right. right. <laughs> right. So, that's the right. thing. I just like, Lord, just, Keep me. I'm here. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, uh, yeah. you know, even hearing about heaven, it's, it's so beautiful to hear about it. But at the same time, it can kind of prick you a little bit because it's like, man, you know, I'm, I'm struggling right now. Guys. Yes. Like, we right, are struggling right. on this yeah. side. And I remember Pastor said, you know, imagine how terrible it would be to have all this struggle on this side and then to make it to the other side and you don't get to see God's Nothing. glory. Wow. You know, it so awesome. I think that's something we need to keep in mind. We have the promise of heaven, yeah. but think about all the ones who don't. And so that right. that motivates me and pushes me even more to reach out to my people that are lost and say, right. look, y'all, we right. are already struggling on this end. Like we have to we have to have something to look forward to. That's yep. right. That's so right. I agree. Words of a famous artist. Now I'm just playing words of an artist that say. Heaven is a nice place, mm -hmm. and I'll be there one day. Yeah. But I'm not going by myself. Yeah. Amen. I want my I whole family it. to save hey. me. This is Hallelujah. Very true. Yeah. I receive yes, it. Yes. Yeah, Lord. Well, thank you so much. Thank Rick. you, Pete. Anything else? No, I just, you know, I, I just uh, want to just encourage anybody out there that's dealing with things, you know, because I struggle with anxiety and depression. Mm. Um, and I just want to encourage people that, you know, 
find somebody for me it was the enemy was trying to use and use those things to keep me by myself yeah and not and so that he can discombobulate yes. my mind and so now i started linking up with other people and just yeah. talking to other people and it's making me feel better yeah so i just want to encourage anybody that's been going through those things that you're not alone Come first on, of all good. god is a friend that's, that's what it says in the bible yeah, god is our his friend. friend right so I relied on God and I just started reaching out to more and more people. And a lot of people look at me and never even think, oh, well, Brittany, you're going through some things. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know that. But man, I just, because in, in, whenever I come to the house of God, mm-hmm. it makes me feel so, I feel so happy. It's and the I joy feel, of the Lord. Yes, I get right. excited to worship yeah. and everything. And mm-hmm. everything that I learned from Pastor preaching to the classrooms. Mm-hmm. But I just thank God every day that he just keep on keeping me. Yeah. And yeah. for anybody that's dealing with what I've dealt with, what I was dealing with. Mm-hmm. Um, just keep on pushing. Keep yeah. on pushing. That's it. Yeah. That's <laughs> so good. God. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, that was so good. Mm. All right. Yes, that was awesome. Yes. Awesome. Yes, yes. Very inspiring. Mm-hmm. What's going on, brother? Good morning. Doing, good. Doing all right? How are you? Good to have you up here, my brother. Thank you. Go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Herb Merrick. I'm Mr. out of Herb. Franklin, Louisiana. Wow. Franklin in the you house. Know, God has brought me here in my life, you know, for a reason. Yeah. You know, the purpose of my life, there's purpose for my life. Mm-hmm. You know, God has blessed me so many different ways and brought me through so many different trials and tribulations. Thank I you. thank him. Mm-hmm through my destiny of, you know, being predestinated in my life where bringing me through the things that I went through in life, you yeah. know, even putting me in the surrounding where I met young men that helped me into the word mm-hmm. of God. Okay. Even it had to take me to go through part of my life or even doing years in prison with God turn my whole circle around Thank you, Lord. 25 years ago Wow! Oh, and it's been wow. a blessing it's amazing. Uh, 25 years ago God is still keeping me mm. you know I just thank God for the miracles and the miracles of prayers mm. the miracle of prayers from my mother from my grandmother yeah. from so many people even as brother Forrest Deacon Forrest I met him yes. and his wife in 97 Oh, wow. And he was a blessing to my life in 97. I ain't know no one here in life yet. And the seed that he sowed in me is still there today. Mm. Come on, man. You know, it's just a blessing. Yeah. And something that told me to come here a few weeks ago. And that scripture that he went through, let not your heart be troubled. Oh, come on. Because at that time, my heart was being troubled in a situation that I was coming out. But I was going through it. I wasn't going to stay in it. Mm. I was just going through it. Yeah. You know, because he said that I walked through the valley of shadow. Come on, brother. But death, I shall feel no evil. Because thou art with me. Mm -hmm. And I thank him for being with me as I go through my trial. Yeah. A tribulation. He's with us, man. Yeah, so about 25 years. 25 yeah. years. So I've what you thought about that word today? That word was a blessing. And then he went back to let not your heart be troubled. Yeah, yeah he, he did. You, you know, and, 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 and the thing about the situation and speaking in when he went to Job and 5 about trouble, mm-hmm. you know, wherever you go, there's going to be trouble in your life. Yeah, that's right. And, you, and my mother told me about weeks, about a week ago, don't never think you out of it. Come on. It's always going to be there. Come on. That's right. But I daily I pray. Like David said, daily I pray because I can understand when it come how to handle those yes. difficult situations. Yes. And I thank God for it. Yeah. You know? Amen. Yeah. Yes, I thank God for it. That's I good. thank God for his word that he brought today. Because yes. something about this young man that God has been showing me about coming towards to join the church. Mm. Because it touches my heart. Yeah. And when it touches my spirit, God telling me that it's time for another growth in my life. That's good. To be around the young men yeah. that I've been around that helping me and me teaching them. 
Come on, bro. And also it's a blessing yeah. to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank, you, thank you for coming. Right. It's great oh, having appreciate you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Come on, man of faith. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Man, we appreciate you, man. Thank Definitely. you for coming up, man. Yes. And sharing your heart with us. Uh, all the way from Franklin. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Curtis <laughs> and <laughs> Kilt no stop, man. Bless huh? Frank, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got yes. Curtis. <laughs> yes. Curtis, my brother. <laughs> may God bless you. Oh, man, God thank bless you, my brother. you also. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it, man. Looking thank forward you. to fellowship and some more with you. Yeah. Amen. And I love how he said, you know, he's been, uh, it's been what, 25 years? 25 years. And so a lot of times we might look for, uh, you know, these big miracles are big things from God, but just enduring, yes. just him keeping you through the, the, through the troubles that you go through for such a long period of time is a blessing in and of itself. That's so right. That's right. That's encouraging to hear. What's up, my brother? Good morning. Brothers. Sister. Minister Cam. Yes. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But, um, so what you thought, big brother? The How word was good, man. Um, it, it actually, uh, just puts things in perspective. You know, a lot of the times, we can be fo so focused on death, you know, and a as far as, you know, earthly beings and even people that aren't saved yet, we could find ourselves living to die. Come on. You know what I'm saying? And, and we live on that spectrum to where we feel that our time is running out. And if we don't do X, Y, and Z in this matter of time, we won't leave a legacy, which is wow. true yeah. to a certain true, extent. Yeah. Um, but when we get caught in that mind frame, um, we find ourselves um not living to our fullest potential yeah. right. so instead of living to die we should live to live again Come on, you know what i'm saying so because on, we know that when we die we aren't truly dying we're just mm. living to live again right. and like the word says to store up your riches in heaven yeah. you know and that's, that's what it. we're doing as believers that's the goal. right mm. you know that's the ultimate goal and just to hear them out, outline you know how heaven is going to be mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and sometimes we we, we don't think about it. We just right, say, oh, right. man, oh, can't wait to get the glory. Yeah. Um, but yeah. those details that he outlined, um, they were so helpful. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To, to know that when we get to this place, there will be no pain. You yes, know what I'm saying? Yes. There will be no sorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we, will, we won't be in poverty or we won't be in lack. Yes. And that's the ultimate goal, mm -hmm. you know, is to get to glory and not just to get to glory for the, for the things in it, in of it in itself, right. but to get the glory for Christ, right. you know, right. because right. He's the ultimate jewel in heaven. Yeah, you know, um, and it was just encouraging, man. It was very informative, um, and it just it it helps me a lot in my walk, you know. Um, and expected in, I forgot what that scripture is. Yes, yes. Um, but we're living yes. for an expected in. Yeah, right, Jeremiah. right. Cool. You know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Jeremiah, yeah. for I know the plans I have for you, mm -hmm. you know, declares the Lord, an plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you an expected end. Yes. A lot of, you know, a lot of the times, you know, we think of that scripture on an earthly basis, you know, to give you an expected end. Oh, wow. You know, dude, he's going to bless my life so much. He's going to give me this car or this house, which is, you know, can be true to a certain right, extent. Right, right. Um, but that expected end is really glory. You know what I'm saying? The true plan he has for us is the true plan that he set forth in Christ Jesus, you know, which was to save our souls. You know, right, of right. course, the blessings that come with Christ will be, um, you know, favor, you know, right, right. sometimes, you know, finances will be great and things like that. We will be blessed. Right. But that ultimate expected end is to get to glory, you mm. know, and it was just, it blessed me, yes. man. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. much it, man. That, that was good, though. But I like how you say, you know, he, he pastor really laid it out for us. He painted a beautiful picture of heaven. Sometimes, you know, we don't think about it. We hear streets paved with gold and things, but, like, he really laid it out, right, like, right. all yeah. of the, the jewels <laughs> and, you know, what it's going to be like to have literal mansions in yeah, heaven. Yeah, he, 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 yeah, he did that so well. So. Yes, he did, bro. Yeah. He did. I think that was very needed, you know, especially mm -hmm. in the time we're in right now. Yeah. Like you said, uh. A lot of times, and you said a great point, you say a lot of times we can focus on death mm -hmm. situations now, yeah. dead situations in our lives, but the Bible tells us to think of things that are heavenly, yes. wow. <laughs> things that are pure, righteous, yeah, come you on. know what I'm saying? It gives us hope, That's you good. know what I'm saying? And not to just be focused on these temporary things, right. you know what I'm saying? Correct. Which 
You know what I'm saying? Seek first the kingdom yeah. of God. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And his yeah. righteousness yeah. and everything else shall be added. Right. So yeah. it just gives us hope to focus on heaven. Right. To let God know, you know what I'm saying? To let people know, remind people that, man, look, yeah. I'm preparing this for Correct. you. Correct. Right. And, and even, and it's a good point you made, that even through all of the trouble, you know, so, you know, when we lose sight of Christ, we lose sight of the ultimate goal. Mm. The goal is to transform us more into his image. You know, the goal is for us to get to glory. Mm. So when we go through these trials, when we go through these troubles, we can have the correct perspective. Okay, this hurts. This is hard. But I know he's trying to work something in me, yeah. you know, so I can transform more into his image. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like what he was preaching a couple Sundays ago. You know, um, I think it was on the same topic. It was talking trouble. about troubled hearts, you know, mm -hmm. and we will have trouble, you know, but God is using that sandpaper of life to smooth us out. In order that we may get to glory with the topaz and all the crazy yeah, yeah, jewels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. yeah. Chrysler. No, yeah, yeah. no, not Chrysler. Yeah, Chry Christ. I see Chrysler. Yeah. They got a Dodge, a Dodge, a Chry Dodge Chrysler. Hellcat. Yeah. No, oh, no, oh. oh. <laughs> not that. Not a demon. It's a Hellcat. <laughs> A heaven cat, no. Yeah. <laughs> heaven cat, the lion of Judah. No, Lord, they making all right. <laughs> no, we just crazy. Oh man, man, but look, Cam, man, I think we reached that time, yeah, right, man. Yeah, we appreciate. So it. We can, we can fellowship oh, some yeah. more off the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> man, appreciate thank you, my brother, man. man. Thank you. Your blessing, man. And you did your thing. I heard this morning the oh, discipleship it was, class. It was, it was great, man. Oh well, man, God had a few more weeks man. left, huh? Yep. Just yep. the beginning. Praise thank God. you, Cam. Yes. All right. Well, this is it. Yeah. Um, that was good. That was good. And it's, you know, it's encouraging yeah. to hear about heaven and to hear pastor make it less of a mystery, you know, because yes. it's a place that we, we haven't seen. We don't know really what it, right. what to expect of it. All we know is what the scriptures say and just to have him lay it out like that for us and paint a beautiful picture of it and, and let us know what we have to look forward to should we walk in the footsteps of Christ and you know live the life that he's called us to live regardless of what we go through regardless of the trials and the tribulations walk this thing out and, and we'll get to glory and you know be able to That's live it. the life that, that Christ has for us and that he you know he wanted for us from the beginning That's so, right. That's right. Awesome, awesome word Pastor did an amazing job um, so we just thank y'all for tuning in for staying on yes with us uh we pray that god continue to have his way i'm pretty much sure you got stories that you would love to share you know what i'm saying uh but we just thank y'all for tuning in tonight i mean today um so we go just pray and we will continue to let the lord have his way today most high god we just thank you for this day we thank you lord god for the word that went forth for using our pastor pastor omar to bring a a, a powerful word lord god to remind us of heaven to remind us of what you have for us, Lord God, to inspire us to continue to keep pressing forward, to continue to keep moving forward for your glory, Lord God. So we just thank you, Lord God, for all what you're doing in this ministry, in our lives. We pray that you bless us, that you keep us, shine your face upon us, turn towards us, Lord God, reward us. Everything we touch, be blessed. Everywhere we go, be blessed. Father God, we just we just want to bless you and make you smile. We just want to do what you call us to do. Yeah. So give us traveling grace blessings in our homes. Father God, wherever we go, Lord God, we just pray that you would be there, that you'd be with us, Lord God. We just thank you for this moment, for this time, for this word. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. And we say all these things in, in Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Y'all have a great week.